In 2019, Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers was released and was rated as one of the best games of that year. What the hell? An MMO scored this high? We're not even talking about the base game. This is just an expansion. What the heck is going on over there? Those were the thoughts I had at that time, but due to my general aversion to MMOs, I shelved my curiosity and let it sink back into the recesses of my mind. A bit later, one of my favorite reviewers, Skilla, announced that he would be doing a review of the game, from the start all the way through Shadowbringers. Oh, okay, maybe I'll finally get to see what all the praise is about. I got really excited because I wanted someone, anyone, to please tell me what makes this game so amazing and what I'm missing out on. But other than a few short impressions that he sprinkled here and there, we never got the review. Just a little ball tickling. Okay, guess I'll never find out. Well, no big loss. I don't like MMOs anyway, right? Fast forward like 8 months. Again, Final Fantasy XIV pops up on my radar. This time, it's because they're expanding the free trial, pushing up that level cap and throwing in the whole first expansion with it. Alright, fine, I give. If I can't find the answer anywhere, I guess I'll just have to see for myself. What have I got to lose? It's practically free. And so, I did. I still am. And I want to present some of my findings here for all you prospective players out there. People on the internet say that this is one of the best MMO experiences out there. That it has one of the greatest stories told in the Final Fantasy series. That its music and community are amazing, etc, etc. Okay, great, but what does that mean for me as a brand new player? Praise like that almost feels like hollow platitudes. Lots of games have good music. Lots of games have interesting stories. What makes this one different? What makes it stand out? Why do I want to experience this all through the framework of an MMO when I have all these other amazing single player experiences sitting on my shelf still in their shrink wrap? And what's the hook that's going to keep me playing for the next 400 hours? These were some of the questions I had prior to starting the game, and maybe the same questions you've been asking yourself. Do a little research and you'll find a number of videos or reviews that will explain to you why this game is worth your time. They'll talk about some of the different features and things you can do as if they're trying to gently coax you into it. But none of them really showed me anything that seemed to live up to the level of buzz and love people have for the game. It always felt like people were saying in low caps, yeah, if this sounds appealing to you, maybe give it a try. Instead of all caps, Oh. My. God. You need to get on this right now. Right now. Now to preface this, I don't have a lot of experience with MMOs. Actually, before starting Final Fantasy XIV, I hated them. I didn't like their payment structure, I didn't like their combat style, or needing to play with friends to have fun. I've only ever played two MMOs in the past. World of Warcraft for like a week on their free trial, and a game called Aeon that I played maybe two months. When I was playing those games, I never got hooked on the combat, never got invested in the world or the story, and I dipped really quickly. So I'm not in a position where I can compare titles to each other. I don't have a point of comparison or reference to look at how one does, let's say, raids better than the other. I have no idea what's standard practice in MMOs these days, who borrowed what from whom, or any of that jazz. You can pretty much think of me as close to brand new to the MMO genre as possible. All I have are my personal experiences with this game, and a few lingering memories from the other. I'll also be talking specifically about A Realm Reborn. To try to tackle this game in its entirety would be way too much. It just makes sense to break them into their respective parts. Okay, disclaimers aside, let's finally jump into this. Being a lover of great stories in games, 
I heard that Final Fantasy XIV had one of the best. One of the best from the Final Fantasy line, and just one of the best in general. And it was because of that that I finally gave in and decided to push past my aversion to MMOs and the widely agreed on slow opening, aka the entirety of A Realm Reborn, hoping for a later payoff once I got to the expansions. Yet, somehow, rather than blitzing through A Realm Reborn to get to the Heaven's Ward expansion, which people say is amazing, I spent, to my surprise, 160 hours in the base game. What, how, and when did this happen? What is it about this game that makes it so addicting, so sticky as I like to put it? I've come up with a few answers. The first thing that really jumped out at me was the sheer amount of variety available in this game. This manifests itself in a number of different ways. Content variety, class variety, daily activities, play styles, crafting, you name it. There's so much to do in this game, it's bananas. Let's take a look at what you get access to. From my understanding, most MMOs lock you into one class per character, meaning you'd have to make alts and go through the same story quests, the same content, again and again and again if you wanted to try out different classes or playstyles. Yippee! That sounds like fun. Not. That just sounds like padding and the quickest way to boredom and burnout. Talk about a waste of time. Not so in Final Fantasy XIV, where you have access to all classes, or jobs as they're called, on one character. All you have to do is swap your weapon. Just like that, just like that. That's right, no more alts, no more mules, no more fiddling around with builds and points. Everything in one. Beautiful. In this way, you're encouraged to try out and experiment with all different classes and playstyles, with minimal risk and time investment. Huh, a game that respects my time. Nice. Getting bored with being a tank? Starting to feel too repetitive? Change it up, become a caster and make things go boom. Or become Naruto and throw down some hand signs. They even run the same way. Jeez, talk about on the nose. A free trial player gets access to 14 of 18 jobs. So nearly all of them. And from my experience, each job plays differently. Except maybe tanks. Don't know yet. I haven't leveled them up high enough. You may think that jobs that fall within a similar role, such as a dragoon or a monk for physical DPS, may just be palette swaps. But no, wrong. Whereas dragoons will be managing DPS through specific ability combinations and timing their jumps, generally staying put, monks will be focused on their position relative to the enemy, constantly moving between flank and rear depending on the next ability in their rotation. A white mage acts as your standard healing class, with access to the incredible AoE Holy, but as an astrologian, you'll be healing all while drawing cards from a deck, handing out buffs to your teammates. Magic DPS black mages are single target focused, constantly managing their mana as they switch between mana draining fire spells to their regenerative ice. Summoners, the other magic DPS, will be focused on spreading damage over time and doing AoE while giving orders to their pets. Each job has their own mechanic that diversifies their playstyle from the others, which only expands the more it levels up. But what I find amazing is that you start seeing this divergence early on. You feel that difference pretty much from the beginning. Except for tanks. With so many choices, so many options, I never once felt bored or stagnant. Each class feels unique and different. Exploring and mastering each playstyle keeps the game feeling fresh, even when you're running the same dungeons over and over again. I found all of them to be both fun and expansive. I never thought I'd like tanking, but because it was so easy to do the switch, I tried it out and found it to be something I actually enjoy. Now, I control the pace of the run. So long as my healer protects me. Last thing about jobs is that they're all well balanced. There's no OP job, 
The entire game has been designed so you can do all content with all classes. You won't get kicked for being a bard instead of a ninja, or a scholar instead of a white mage. What matters is not your job, but how effective you are at your role. So find one you enjoy and play whatever appeals to you. As if leveling those jobs weren't enough, there's a whole mess of other things you can and will be tempted to do. On top of combat jobs, you also have access to all crafting and gathering jobs, of which there are a combined total of 11. Each has their own quest line and unique progression paths that you can explore. You can do quests for each of the five beast tribes, which also have their own respective storylines. My favorite so far is the sniveling kobolds. They're so pathetic. You can level up your chocobo, play mini games at the golden saucer, or rank up with your grand company. Once you get to second lieutenant, you get to manage your own squadron, which you can then take into dungeons, foregoing the need to wait for other players. If you love mastering combat and mechanics, there's a wide variety of dungeons, raids, and trials, or boss fights, with scaling difficulty. There's also a PvP system, but not that many people are into the PvP. Maybe you're all about customization. Look at all the different types of gear you can get. Look at all the clothes and styles players deck themselves out in. There's a whole glamour system and economy in place here. Some say fashion is the true end game. There's just too much to do. And that's a good thing. As a person that trends towards being a completionist, I look at it all and think, God damn it, I want to do everything. Literal death sentence. Let's talk about progression. One of the biggest turnoffs about MMOs is grinding. There's nothing like playing for 5 hours only to see your experience bar move an inch. I'm happy to report that leveling doesn't feel like a huge slog. Rather, having one character that can do it all creates a constant sense of progression, and I think it's this feeling of progression that makes the game feel the most sticky for me. A Realm Reborn as it is now has been designed to quickly push new players up to level 50. Playing through the main story quest, you'll rapidly level your first job. You'll get mounds and mounds of VXP just for talking to people. You can probably get into the mid 30s within 25 hours of playtime just by following the main story quest. But let's say you want to level up a second, a third, a fourth, a 14th class. How are you going to do it? There are all kinds of systems in place to streamline and fast track the leveling process. You get huge EXP at lower levels for hunting specific mobs, bonus EXP for resting in a sanctuary where the big crystals are, 3% additional EXP for the food buff, 5 to 15% EXP from the free company buff if you're part of one, bonus EXP from equipping certain items like the brand new ring. There's also the armory buff which gives plus 100% EXP for any job at a level lower than your highest job. If you're on a preferred server, you get the Road to 70 buff, doubling all EXP gained after applying all those other bonuses. And all of these stack. Again, a game that respects your time. Nice. With all of these sources of experience, you won't be spending hours upon hours grinding away, unless you purposefully set out to. While I was playing, I always had this feeling of, my power up is right around the corner, my next unlock is only two levels away. This game loves to dangle shinies tantalizingly in front of your face, just barely out of reach. And then you get it. But you see the next one, again, just barely out of reach. Rinse and repeat and you can understand how you can lose hours upon hours in this game. It's as if it's saying, look at all these presents. You want to open them all, yes? Yes, I, I do want to open them all. Gimme! That feeling of constantly gaining skills and abilities kept me coming back time and time again, day after day, to see how the gameplay and fighting styles would change and evolve. And it just feels so painless, so easy. The game really taps into that feeling of growth and mastery, of I'm getting stronger, I'm getting better, 
at understanding not only the jobs, but also the game and its roles and mechanics. Progression? A+. Plus. How about some gameplay and combat? One of the things I dislike about MMOs is the feeling of stand in place spam attack button. Now again, this could be because I never got to a high enough level where more combat mechanics are prevalent. This was an area I really thought I'd have to grit my teeth and power through. But the reality was quite different. Combat, especially against bosses, is easily one of the more fun and challenging aspects of the game. And for me, one of the bigger draws. Here, position makes a difference. Maximizing DPS isn't as important as avoiding damage, and each job has their own combat style you have to learn. Most bosses have unique mechanics that you have to follow. Throw up a shield at the right time, bring all the adds down to 5% health, break chains or free imprison teammates, all while trying to optimize your damage rotations. These mechanics keep combat interesting and prevents fights from feeling stale and samey. I'm constantly moving and repositioning. I have to pay attention to what's going on, weaving in hits while dodging theirs and utilizing environmental elements. Again, that sense of growth, control, and mastery come into play. As you get better and better at fighting, you'll find yourself easily slipping into that flow state, nimbly moving in and out of danger as you effortlessly execute your big damage combos. There's a lot to learn and a lot to master, but once you get it, everything clicks into place and it just feels so satisfying. Wow, never thought I would praise an MMO's combat. If you're like me, you're the only person you know who plays or is interested in playing Final Fantasy XIV. Here's the good news. This game has been designed with the solo player in mind. In the other MMOs I mentioned earlier, it felt like you needed to play with friends in order to enjoy the experience. And the good stuff didn't start until you were max level in the end game. That's how much of a chore and bore the lower level stuff was. This game is different. Final Fantasy XIV feels more like a single player game with MMO elements. Never once did I feel like I needed to pull my friends into play in order to enjoy it. Never once did I feel like I was missing out on anything because I was playing solo. The Party Finder works exceptionally well for teaming up with people to do dungeons, trials, and raids. Otherwise, you can pretty much ignore everyone and go at this game at your own pace, doing the myriad of things on your checklist. So if you like what you've seen so far but are hesitating because you have no one to play with, I want to assure you, don't worry. You'll enjoy it. Frankly, I think playing solo is actually the better experience. You don't feel that pressure to catch up, to click through the cutscenes or text boxes, both of which there are many, so be prepared to read. For a game like this, in which story plays such an important role, it's better to slow down and take it all in. Familiarize yourself with the world, the lore, because Final Fantasy XIV is more about the journey than the destination. You know, one of those types of games. This brings us to story. I thought it really weird how I was pulled into this game because I've heard of its great story, but was hooked by everything else. As opposed to games where story and lore are forgettable and ignorable, I like how this game makes it one of its focal points. It helps me become more invested in characters and the world and my place in it. I'm not just some nameless mook aiding the actual players. I am one of those players, and a big player at that. And I think that's part of what makes this game appealing to me. As for the story itself, A Realm Reborn is cliché. You are the chosen one here to deliver salvation in a time of war and calamity, yada yada. Okay, got it, great. At times, I felt like I was playing through Monster Hunter World, where the story was just a vehicle to get from one boss to the next, one area to the next. And it kinda is. But the sense I'm getting here is that the game is trying to do two things. Set the foundation for the story to come, and slowly introduce the player to the world and all of its characters, history, and lore. It's trying to do a lot. Looking back on it, I think it does a fairly decent job at gradually exposing the player to the wider world around them. Now, I think it's important to set the right expectations here. My advice is to see this base game as an investment, one which will, hopefully, get paid off down the line. People say the story doesn't get good until the expansions, namely Heavensward and Shadowbringers, 
and lovingly refer to a realm reborn as a slog. There are still fetch quests. Go here, pick up a thing, go back. Or return here, talk to NPC, who then ask you to talk to them somewhere else. Like, dude, why didn't we just meet there in the first place? We have cell phones, so why didn't you say this earlier? This feels especially grueling and tedious until you're able to fly, at which point it downgrades to eye rolling and mild annoyance. It's likely that this is just an artifact of old game design, but there were plenty of times I wished I had the option of moving with the NPC to the next location, removing the need to travel travel travel. I hear this gets toned down quite a bit once you hit the first expansion, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. It should also be noted that a lot of work has been done to streamline the main storyline in A Realm Reborn. I don't know how it used to be, but from what I can gather, there seemed to be a lot of padding that has since been removed. Overall, the story itself for A Realm Reborn feels like a C plus B minus. Average. But even so, it's not all bad. There were still plenty of twists and turns and a likable quirky cast of characters that I'll leave you to enjoy on your own. Now where the main story drops the ball, the job quests are there to pick it back up. These storylines I found to be way more compelling. A teacher's journey to regain his confidence and powers. A ninja village betrayal. Helping a boy get revenge for his parents. Being there for a colleague as she fights to overcome her past trauma. Each base job has their own succinct storyline as you progress from levels 1 through 30. After that, you unlock your specialized job and you get another, different storyline on top of that. There's a lot of fun and variety here. Each feels lovingly crafted, blending serious, comedic, and reflective tones. In my eyes, these storylines and the ridiculous Hildebrand questline totally make up for the stumbles of the main story. I give these something like an A, bringing my combined story score to a B, B+. The last thing I want to touch on is value, another reason why I believe people love and praise this game as they do. This is a game that I've played, up to the point of me writing this, 200 hours, and I haven't paid a dime. Not a dime. With the free trial, there is no time limit. Play as much as you want, as long as you want. Explore the world to your heart's content. Push each job, both combat and crafting, up to level 60. Partake in combat and loot and minigames all day long. Essentially, what you're getting is 75% of all character progression and 50% of all released content. For free. How can you top that? Yes, there are some differences being a free trial user versus a paying customer. Money cap, can't use retainers, can't buy a house, etc. But those features are so negligible that in no way, shape, or form did they take away from my experience. Yes, there's also a cash shop full of cosmetics with, in my opinion, ridiculous pricing. But never once did I feel pressured or enticed to spend money on it. You barely even know that it's there. In Final Fantasy XIV, what you see is what you get. Value. Players see its value. They see it in the game's look, design, and content which feels endless and expansive. Players feel valued. They feel it through the game's systems, approach, and the attitude of the team. In response to a player asking how to stay motivated to play the game, Yoshi P, the game's producer, famously said, it's all right not to play it every day. Since it's just a game, you can stop forcing yourself if it's hard on you to keep that up. Rather, it'll just pile up unnecessary stress if you limit yourself to playing just that one game since there are so many other games out there. So, do come back and play it to your heart's content when a major patch kicks in. Then, stop to play other games before you get burned out, and then come back for another major patch. This will actually make me happier. Wow. Just wow. I think that speaks for itself. Earlier, I asked why people love this game. Why spend your time here as opposed to all the other great games out there? What makes Final Fantasy XIV so great? I hope I helped to answer that question for you. To me, it seems less of one big reason and more the accumulation of a lot of smaller reasons. The culmination of many different systems, mechanics, and designs being fit together like a giant puzzle. 
For me, speaking just about A Realm Reborn, it was that constant feeling of progression, its ease, the variety of playstyles and content I experienced, and its engaging combat mechanics, all for the low, low price of zero dollars. Value. After 200 hours, I came to discover that Final Fantasy XIV is like a mood. It's a chill time. There's no stress here. You just come in, romp around for an hour or two, or if you're like me, five hours or two, and bounce. There's always something to do, always something to level up, and any number of ways to do it. Prior to this game, I disliked MMOs. I came for the story, but didn't even get to the good parts before this game got its hooks in me. Somehow, I got addicted, and that's saying something since I haven't even hit the game's highs yet. I may not have been an MMO guy before, but Final Fantasy XIV seems to have hit the right chord for me. So, should you finally play this game? Yeah, if uh, anything I've talked about sounds appealing to you, maybe give it a try. No. This is me saying in all caps, GET ON THIS RIGHT NOW FAM. RIGHT NOW. If you made it here to the end, then you, yes you, are a rock star. Thanks for sticking around and I truly hope that this video has helped you make a decision, whether that's to play or pass. I'm currently making my way through Heaven's Ward, so I hope to make a shorter video on that expansion soon. Until then, later.